Hello everyone! Today we're going to be starting on our Ted Harrison inspired landscapes. Ted Harrison was a painter from Canada and he created some really beautiful, bright, graphic looking landscapes that had a lot of different contrast between cool colors and warm colors. And a lot of them had great value gradation, which is perfect for us as we are learning about incorporating value. For your picture, you're going to decide, is your landscape going to include a body of water or is it just going to be sky and ground? You'll figure out, is it going to be horizontal or vertical? And then you'll wanna ultimately set that horizon line. So you could set it really lightly in pencil just divide up like this will be the sky and this is the ground. In a lot of Ted's grounds, he had all of these kind of rocky cliffs. They weren't necessarily a very flat landscape. And so to incorporate some rocky cliffs in yours, you could start at the bottom of the paper doing kind of a jagged line that comes up and back down again, starting to do another one. You can even have some that tuck behind other lines. If you wanted to, you could leave room for a lake or have a river running. And notice how these lines can go up above that horizon line that you drew. I might even leave a little bit of that showing in the middle here, and this could be my body of water. If I wanted to highlight that, maybe I would change this mountain so that more of the water will be shown and I can do a little bit of a reflection. As with anything, when we are drawing for the first time on a new project, we wanna draw light so we can make eraser marks. Having your pencil show through a painting is never a good idea. With the sky, we're gonna very lightly draw some lines to show where our value change is. So if we look at this one, this has a nice example of how we have either, I'm guessing it's a moon, and then you can see how the darkest blue is at the top and each of these little stripes gets lighter and lighter and lighter as it moves towards that horizon line. And a lot of the other ones, this is a good example, you can see he'll have even bright colors, those warm colors against the cool colors, and he'll have kind of these wiggly, like almost like wind-like lines in the sky. So think about how you could divide your sky up into sections so that we can incorporate different values. Decide what time of day it is. A lot of his, you know, you'll see the sun or moon right here. I think for mine, maybe I'll do mine a little bit lower right by the water because it can create a reflection. And then I'm just gonna kind of lightly do some lines coming out from around that. So I know maybe as my colors get away from the sun, they might deepen and get darker. I also kind of like that wiggle the wind shape line. So maybe I'll include one of those wind shape lines in here as well. The idea is just to create a very fun background. It's got a lot of movement to it. It's not a realistic looking landscape. We're having a lot of fun with color here. Okay. Once you have that set, it can start to get kind of confusing. What's the sky and what's the ground? If you are con concerned that you're going to forget, maybe label like where does the ground start? Like this and this are the beginning of my ground. And then this little triangle shape right here, that's gonna be water, okay? Our next thing is going to be painting. You're gonna to wanna to think about using value in your art. And to do that, we will be mixing some colors using white. So the colors out of the bottle, when we take that color and we start to add white to it, it's going to get a lighter value to it. You could even do some color mixing depending upon what your teacher is set up to do. You wanna decide which part you're gonna work on. So for me, I like to paint from the top down. That way I'm always going down to drier paper. And I'm not putting my hand down here. If I wanted to start with my sun first, I might start with my lightest value. 
So I might take a little bit of my white and grab a little bit of my yellow and make you very light yellow. When you are mixing a unique color, you need to mix up enough of it to complete that whole section. So because my sun is not very big, I only need a little bit of color mixed up. And before I put my brush down, I'm just gonna even go over that line and erase it. Because it's so light, I just don't want any pencil lines showing. And then for my next one, I can go into my color, add a little more color. And this can be my next section. You wanna make sure that there is enough of a difference between two sections so that when you see them side by side, they look different from each other. If there's not enough difference, go back and add more paint. In this one, this color now is pretty close to my original orange. So now I'm gonna start adding in a little bit of this pink, which is going to change the type of orange that I have. With painting, if you make a mistake, it's better to let it dry and then come back to it and try to cover it up with a different color rather than try to fix it while it's wet. Like if I go outside and accidentally go into my mountain, I'm gonna let that dry and then I can come back in and cover it up once it's dry. Trying to work with it when it's wet can just mix the colors even more and make a little bit more of a mess for yourself. For the wind, I'm gonna switch it up and use a blue tone to contrast my very warm color sky. Continue on in this fashion until you complete your painting. As you are working, just a couple tips for you. Remember to only mix up as much paint as you need and only mix one color at a time. Notice how I started you know, adding, I started with my lightest value, continued adding more of the yellowy orange and then started adding pink. I only had pink, this yellow, orange and white and I got all of these different values and shades of those colors just from color mixing. So take your time, feel free to test out colors as you make them on a separate piece of paper and continue working on this slow and carefully. When you finish painting your Ted Harrison inspired landscape, there's one last step that is optional. In a lot of Ted's work, you'll notice that there is lines drawn in between the different values. And so in this one, we can see we have some of these blue lines kind of tracing the different cliffs, but then they're not in the sky. Here again, you can see these blue lines outlining the cliffs. Sometimes you will see them in the sky and sometimes you won't. And so as you're wrapping up yours, this one kind of like gives you that coloring page vibe. As you're wrapping up yours, you can consider if you wanted to trace the outline of some of your different landscape forms or things that are happening in your sky. You'll notice, especially in my lighter areas that like the pencil lines are showing. So this might be a nice way to hide some of those pencil lines. And what you could do is you could just take a colored pencil and feel free to experiment with some different colors to see what shows up. And I think I'll use the purple. Just try to go real slow and trace those different lines in between the values. I hope you enjoyed creating your very awesome Ted Harrison inspired landscape using warm colors, cool colors, and value. Nice job, you guys.